Hey everyone, I'm your average guy, Sahil Rumna. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I have my friend Raghav with me. He has done his Masters in Mechatronics Engineering from Simon Fraser University, British Columbia. And in today's video, we are going to have a look into his life as a student. And also, we will try to get some answers to most commonly asked questions by the students from Mechatronics and Electronics background. Hey Raghav, how are you bro? I'm good bro. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming Raghav. So, so Raghav, can you tell us something about your background? Yes, talking about my background. So I've done a bachelor's in electronics, instrumentation and control systems from Thapar University. And after that I worked, uh, I've done an internship in an electric vehicle startup company. And later on I worked in an electric vehicle manufacturing company. Speedways Electric back in India. Okay, so Raghav, what was the reason you chose uh, Mechatronics at SFU? Was it your uh, previous experience in India or something else? So what was the reason? So yeah, um, so as I worked in electric vehicles back in India, so I thought maybe it will be a good option for me to, to further pursue my master's in mechatronics. So uh, I have read about Simon Fraser University and especially in the mechatronic systems, they work in, in fuel cells and electric vehicles. So that's something that motivated me to pursue my master's. Awesome, man. So Raghav, were there any other options for you? Like what are the universities you apply to pursue your master's? Um, yeah, apart from Simon Fraser University, I've applied to UBC, McMaster's and SFU. So these are the three universities I have applied, but I luckily got into SFU. Okay, and talking about SFU, so what were the requirements uh, for your program? Um, yeah, the requirements are quite simple. They only consider your CGPA from your bachelor's, your job experience or a bit of research experience if you have. And apart from that, a minimum of 6.5 IELTS score is mandatory. Okay, so Raghav, if we talk specifically about SFU, so how how was your experience as a student at, at SFU? I mean, in terms of the department, in terms of the people around you, so what was your experience? My experience was SFU, at SFU was great. So um, yeah, the professors are really good. SFU has, has nice research projects, industrial fundings and overall the culture of the university is quite good and people are supportive and i would say like um, um in the in the grad studies like uh, with the with the masters and phd program most of us are international students and the also the department is mostly dominated by persian people and yeah the experience on whole was very good and i would definitely recommend it to other people Okay, and Raga, what were the other departments, like other major departments at SFU? So yeah, the most the most famous and the departments at SFU are uh, uh, are philosophy, uh, BD School of Business, mechatronics, sustainable energy, and and the law department. So these are the these are the big departments here at SFU. So Raghav, what was the cost of degree at SFU? So I, I mean, was it expensive to pursue your master's at SFU? No, so yeah, uh, the cost of degree at SFU is quite economical. So it ranges from $8,000 to $9,500 per semester. So my degree at SFU was 16 months with, with three semesters of teaching and one co-op semester. So for the three semesters, it costed me $24,000, but uh, uh, the last semester was co-op semester, the internship semester. So it was a paid, paid co-op. So, uh, so my fees came back, like when I worked at, at the company. So yeah, on whole, it costed me around $30,000 to do my master's. Awesome, man. So Raghav, if we talk about your co-op experience, so was it really hard to find a co-op while you were uh, studying at SFU? Um, no, like, 
so sfu has uh, has a co-op portal and also a job portal so a lot of the local companies and even some international companies they come and post their co-op openings and their job openings on the portal and also the people at sfu there are placement coordinators there are some co-op coordinators so one can connect with them and they help you to tailor your resume to brush up your skills in order to find a good co-op So how is Canada for electronics and mechatronics industry if we talk in general So um yeah so there there are a lot of job opportunities for electronics and mechatronics sector and especially talking about BC I would say like there is um BC is known for their biomedical instrumentation side also about now BC is investing a lot of money into the startups and the companies that are working on green energy and sustainable development So yes BC is well known for them and there are a lot of job opportunities here in BC And Raghav if we talk about the hub of electronics and mechatronics industry so is there any other province that has a lot of job opportunities or like the Vancouver is the leading one in terms of jobs It is an undeniable fact that yeah Toronto has a lot more job opportunities than Vancouver it is undeniable but yeah being said that it uh, i would say like st- uh, like vancouver has a lot of job opportunities it's only going to take a bit more time and one has to be a bit more persistent but but yeah for sure one will get a nice job here in vancouver also and and rago if you talk uh, about uh, vancouver for the students so what i have heard that vancouver is a bit expensive as compared to other canadian provinces so do you have to something to say on this yeah you are absolutely right i would say like yeah vancouver is like in my opinion i would say vancouver is the best place to live here in canada because of the weather and um yeah so it comes with it cost so it is quite expensive here to live in canada and i would say for a student it uh, it is approximately around 1500 dollars per per month here to stay in vancouver and rather can a student earn enough while working part time to pay off their living expenses and their uh, daily bills um yes so firstly i would talk about finding part time jobs so there are a lot of part time opportunities and um i believe one like anyone will be able to find a good part time job in a month or so and yeah with with the 20 hours of working uh, working limit on with the with the study permit i would say one will be able to earn around uh, $1200 uh, per month so still the 300 is uh, there is a gap of 300 yeah so still so need to find some other Uh, some other or maybe yeah to manage their expenses it depends yes, yes. Ex- exactly so i if you talk about specifically about mechatronics industry or maybe the electronics industry so is there any opportunity for the part time jobs um yes so yeah my first job was my first part time job was at an electronics manufacturing services so yes there are a lot of opportunities in electronics but uh, but in the manufacturing side not in the research and the development or the testing and other other areas but yes so if anyone is interested in in manufacturing the power circuit boards um working with the smt line so yeah there is opportunity in that field okay and any tips you would like to give to the people who are to build up their portfolio for finding a part time job in their own field in mechatronics um i would certainly say like yeah in order to enhance your portfolio one must have uh, a lot of hands on experience so like yeah working with the with the pcbs working with the like selecting the components designing the circuits so that is certainly going to help you a lot even in your masters even in finding a good job opportunity either part time or full time okay And Raga, if you talk about the future, so what's the scope of permanent residency while living in Vancouver or British Columbia as a whole, uh, as a province? Yeah, that's a very good question. I would um, so yeah, the, so yeah, I will send you uh, a list a PDF document. You can put it in the description below for your viewers. So there is a list of 
courses like the graduate courses, the master and PhD programs that are accredited by the BC government. So as soon as one has done, uh, like completed their degree in, in these programs, um, he or she can file their PR. So they don't have to, they are not, uh, they are not supposed to get any job uh, offer or any employment or have any job experience in order to file their PR. So you just have to complete your degree and you, you can file your PR. And Raghav, was your course under this uh, this program for the permanent yes. residency? Yes, luckily my course was under this program. That's, that's awesome, man. And Raghav, any final advice you would like to give to our listeners who are currently listening to our video? Yes, so I would like to, uh, to say to all your uh, viewers, that we as international students, I believe we lack on the connection side. So yeah, so one must be, uh, get connected with, with the recruiters, with other people, like there are so many mentorship programs. So one must go to those mentor, use that mentorship programs, use the social events, use LinkedIn and get connected with the people here. And the other thing that I would like to say is about the taxes. I haven't figured it out yet, but yeah, later on I have plan to uh, to learn more about the taxes and personal finance while working here well i guess that's it for today's talk Raghav. thanks a lot for sparing our time and sharing your valuable experience with the viewers i appreciate it buddy it's my pleasure thank you thank you Raghav.